I'm finally at the point where I'm making some selections on anchors and uh, doing some modifications uh, to make anchoring easier. So for my primary anchor, I've selected a Mantis M1. Um, and I've actually never used one of these anchors before. Uh, I've used similar anchors, but um, uh, one of the one of the main reasons I I selected this uh, is the, the ability that you can take it apart. It will be helpful to remove the anchor from the bow and store it somewhere in the bilge, uh, and that's obviously a lot easier if you can take it apart. Also, uh, these anchors seem to have gotten very good reviews. Uh, although they look similar to the Rockna, uh, they they do have a, a bit of differences. Uh, but either one would have been would have been good, and I'm sure there's plenty of other anchors out there that I I didn't even see that also would have been uh, a good choice. And for the anchor uh, attachment, it's always wise to use an anchor swivel, and I. I have had this one in my parts box. It's actually brand new, but I've never used it. Uh, but I didn't want to put this on my primary anchor, mainly because this attachment here, this screw, um, there's no way to seize it on there. Uh, so I probably would use some sort of uh, Loctite or something, which, which would have to be reapplied because that would dissolve after a while. Um, and same thing here on both ends, uh, the attachment. So, um, I am going to use this, but uh, in a different place. So for the, my primary anchor, I've opted for a Mantis anchor swivel. Um, and by all accounts, these are very well made uh, and do the job that you need them to do uh, very well. So I'll be installing that. The anchor I'm replacing is this 25 pound CQR. Installing that swivel uh, doesn't seem to be too difficult. So this is uh, two halves and you kind of just hold it together with some Teflon tape. There's a pin here to go through the first uh, link of the chain and then you kind of screw this down and uh, seize it with either seizing wire or a cotter pin and then this just attaches to your anchor. And now that's all installed, um, including seizing on the shackle. I did install the uh, bow roller in an earlier episode. And now here on the bow, uh, looks great. And what a difference from my old CQR, uh, not just in appearance, but in the sheer surface area. And now might be a good time to update this uh, little stainless steel piece that I put on here. Uh, it's actually meant to be a sacrificial piece um, uh, where I've been docking there's a lot of current so if I'm if I'm sailing with a new sailor or uh, simply just gets away from me I end up bumping the dock and can you see evidence of that here uh, plus it's very rusty it's not it's not marine stainless so I do have uh, this piece uh, which is much longer and I'm going to screw that in and that is much nicer, although a little dirty. Uh, so what I, I think I'm going to do is probably get some sheet metal to make uh, a little uh, anchor guard or protector here for the point of the anchor, which I am sure will eventually hit the top side. And now time to address the stern deck because this will be part of the stern anchoring setup. So when I bought the boat, um, these uh, holes for the cowl vents were actually just uncovered there were two gaping holes and um uh, i did address the wood coring in there with epoxy uh some years ago um on this side uh, i put in some corrugated ducting it goes to a bilge blower which actually came with the boat but that works well uh so i originally addressed this by purchasing a set of these uh, cowl vents from five oceans i believe um and they're made of like a flexible pvc but the problem was literally after a month in the sun, they started to turn yellow and, and, and literally started to deteriorate. Um, and I've since addressed that uh, by just painting them with this uh, inexpensive topside paint. 
uh, and it's been almost a year and it's done very well I mean the paint is flexible so those those are are in good shape um, the deck plates that these came with you insert one of those into one of these this lid pries up these became very brittle in the Sun um, so I did try um, putting some fiberglass around the flange and uh, painting it but that that really didn't work that well they still started to crack um, and also the lid here you actually have to pry this off of the screwdrivers that's very brittle so chips and breaks and looking for uh, a more elegant solution so what I have here are two stainless steel deck plates uh, the kind that you need to insert the tool in here to open um, and actually I bought a few of these uh, some years ago uh, when when I saw a good deal on them knowing I would probably need them someday um, I also installed one here to close the hole for the uh, the pedestal that I removed um, so the only issue with these is that the the screw holes um, the hole here is a little bit too big so the screw holes kind of miss the hole and the solution was to cut a few a couple of these um, fiberglass uh, rings out of a scrap piece of fiberglass I'm going to epoxy these in epoxy them down simple enough one issue however is that uh, this part that you insert from the cowl vent is a little too small for this so I did uh, search around for a solution um, and I did find this rubber piece it's actually an adapter for drain hose from going one size to the other um, so I just cut that off uh, and you can see on this one I just stuck it in there and put a couple of screws to just hold it although probably would be fine without it and that actually fits really well uh, in there and now I've got those installed uh, just put some butyl tape in there it's going to continue to squeeze out uh, so these obviously screw in there um, when they're tight to get them out I just use this rather than a special tool it's just a um, piece of uh, thick copper wire originally meant for hanging pipes from rafters and the reason I'm upgrading these deck plates uh, other than damage by the Sun uh, to the plastic ones is for a couple of reasons uh, well for this side uh, the where the blowers installed um, I'll probably just push one of these in there when needed otherwise um, it'll just stay covered with this uh, on this particular side I can also use one of those I have two um, when it's open uh, but the original intention was to install a pause pipe or chain pipe not this exact one because it's the wrong shape and size uh, but something I could probably just cut into this and screw in there when I need it but I'm gonna hold off on that I decided um, uh, my, my, my stern anchor road will be in the um, rear lazarette uh, but more than likely I'm going to be carrying that uh, paddling it out with a dinghy to set that when my main anchor is already set so um, I'm gonna kind of wait and see if I want to go that route and the next piece will be to install this stern anchor roller right here on the aft tow rail and now it's been through bolted on both sides and this wing nut allows me to uh, increase or decrease the tension on the rollers themselves. Also of some relevance to stern anchoring, um, I mounted this um, rub strake on the back of the rudder. Um, I don't anticipate getting much chafe from the anchor road, uh, but there's always that possibility. So uh, I mounted it since I had it. And for my stern anchor itself, I've decided to go with a Fortress FX11. Um, they are very effective, but they're also very light. Um, and best of all, you can take them apart, um, store them in a bag and put them out of the way. Also would like to get a Fortress FX23 as a storm anchor, um, which is very much oversized for this boat, uh, but would also work as um, a backup in case I lost my primary anchor and I'll have that extra swivel on board in case of that. Um, so for now I have a uh, Danforth type fluke anchor 
uh, for demonstration purposes. And in the past, what I've done to hang the anchor from the push pit is to use a two inch piece or rather two inch diameter uh, PVC pipe because it slides right in there. Um, and I would hang this on the outside of the push pit uh, with some um, some hose clamps. Uh, but but in order to get the uh, road in there with it, it would probably need to be a little bit wider. So uh, I think I'm going to forego that and uh, use one of the standard anchor hangers like this one from Windline. And now that's installed. And because the monitor sticks out a bit, um, the best way to handle the stern anchoring, I think, is to set up a bridle. So I have the anchor line there, and then I have a dock line, which I attach to the anchor line uh, to form that bridle. And here's some detail on that bridle. So I have my anchor line coming down here. Uh, I took some lighter line, formed a prussic knot, which is one of my favorite knots. Um, and then uh, attach that dock line to here with a bowline to form that bridle. And for retrieval, I do have that roller on the stern. Uh, and that works nicely. It's very convenient. Um, but the only thing is the, there's an eye where the road connects to the chain. But this roller is actually designed for that. You just loosen the wing nut and this piece kind of slides off, allowing you to just lift it up and over that. And the last thing is the idea of having that chain pipe coming out of the deck plate. Um, and really the only advantage to that would be that it, it's coming out and then it, I could leave it attached to the anchor that's hanging here. Um, but there is also some disadvantages, uh, and that is trying to get the the road back in there. I mean, the, the chain will drop, but there's a, a raked transom there, so it doesn't really drop very well, um, and that, that's kind of an issue. So I think I'm not going to do that at this point, um, especially since uh, more than likely I'll be carrying the, the anchor and the road out in a dinghy to set it. I mean, there are other ways by by um, going back on your main anchor and then dropping it and then pulling up. But um, I think I think I'm going to forego the chain pipe.